السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى إن سورة طه يقول إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري ترولي I am Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking, you know, in the first person in Surah Taha. There's no God but my but me or but I. So you serve me alone, you worship me alone, and establish regular prayer for celebrating my praise. Innani an Allah la ilaha illa anafa budni wa aqimi salata li dikri. You know, to start with, uh, Muslim perspective about the human being is different. You know, you see a lot of emphasis about how important a human being is and uh, everything is about me and, you know, uh, what can I achieve and so on. It's the reverse in the Muslim, you know, perspective there. The human being is mostly, primarily, is abid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us abid. Every one of us is abid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a slave or servant. You can use both terms in English. And 
It is in our nature to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, and fulfill this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a covenant between a human being and his Creator, and we try to fulfill it to the best of our ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made salah, made namaz, namaz, obligatory, compulsory. And he emphasized, you know, every time in the Quran when salah is mentioned, it says establish. Now, the word establish is different than just pray. There are things you can do to establish. Aqim is salah, iqamat is salah. So there's a whole bunch of issues there that accompanies, you know, praying there, preparing for it, establishing the places to where you pray, uh, thinking about it, you know, it, it gives it a, a different uh, dimension there. So, as we decide that the only purpose of us on this earth is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, we should follow through and should our everyday, you know, endeavor should go into that stream there of being worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and mankind except to worship me or to serve me. This ayah should be always on our mind every day, 24-7. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The only reason that I created jinn and mankind is just to worship me. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking in the first person. You know, in this day and age, uh, and to use uh, terms that people are familiar with, if you are, uh, you know, you have a business or you are in a, uh, you know, you have a, a job, every whether it's a business or, a, or a, you know, some kind of employment there, there's a hierarchy, you know, there are people whom you'd like to connect with because they make your life easier, you know. If you are, you know, employed in a big company, you'd like to have good relation with your boss and your boss would like good relation with middle management and then middle management would like to have access, would know, have a relationship with the, you know, executive, the chief executive officer, chief financial officer. In today's, you know, business, they call this access. They call this access. And the better and, you know, more extensive access you have, the better you're going to be in your job. Everybody talks about access. You know, when they talk about, you know, Congress or the White House, they say, oh, some people have access to the president. Some people have access to the speaker. So that always gives you, you know, a way to get you things done. And we should look at, uh, you know, salah, namaz, like an axis, but a different kind of axis. It's an axis with the Creator, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no higher authority than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is higher there. It doesn't matter with the president, king, you know, Nobody. So, if you work so hard in your job, in your business, in your relation to have access to somebody who is in authority and who can help you take care of your business and do your job. So, how about having access to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the access to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the five daily prayer. Think of it that way. This is your access to the Creator of the whole universe there. And it's very easy, very simple, very frequent. People, you know, might end up going to, let's say, the White House once in a lifetime. They'll be talking about it for forever. They'll talk about it to their children, their grandchildren, and so on. They'll have pictures of it. Here you have access to the creator of this earth five times a day. Five times a day. The 
it's it's a ibadah salah namaz is a ibadah okay and it is the second pillar of islam after shahada once you profess that there's no god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and muhammad is his messenger the next thing is salah namaz and think of salah like it has all components of the other pillars of islam when you pray you know you refrain from talking you know you you refrain from eating you're concentrating on you know what you're doing there which is doing your ruku and sujood and your fatiha and all of that so there is a component of fasting in there okay you are looking at the qibla at mecca so there is a component of hajj then you know in zakah you sacrifice your money for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah you sacrifice your time so this is you know it it has components of fasting zakah and hajj salah was not prescribed to muslims only every nation every ummah from adam up till now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed to them some kind of salah namaz it might have been a bit different here and there but they're all prayed to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another important thing about salah is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know made it compulsory upon muslims where he made it compulsory about muslim in the seventh heaven when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went up in miraj and literally you know was qaba qusayni adna very close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that you know from now on muslim should pray and you know you know the story it started with you know like 500 times a day then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy you know cut it down to you know 150 and then five times a day so this is just to stress the importance of salah namaz because it was prescribed in person from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the seventh heaven there so talking about you know how important namaz and salah is what happens if we just neglect it you know uh, i don't have the time i'm not going to do it it's not that important i'm too busy you know as with everything that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know gave us there there is the uh, you know as they say the carrot and the stick there so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first tells you how important it is and then tells you you know what's going to happen if you don't follow there so in surah al-muddathir uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ma salakakum fi saqar qalu lam nakum min al-musallin so these are the angels asking the people who went to the hell fire what led you here what brought you here to the hell fire and then those people will say well we were not of those who prayed lam nakum min al musallin we were not of those people who did their namaz their prayers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that people who do their prayer namaz regularly he'll be with them all the time wa qala allah inni ma'akum la in aqamtum as salah allah said i'll be with you if you establish regular prayers the prayer the salah the namaz is the closest relationship between the servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the abid the slave there's nothing wrong about being proud of being the slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know slavery has a lot of bad connotation which is true now and 2000 years ago except when it comes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
You should be proud to say, I'm the servant, I'm the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be proud of it. There's a hadith that says, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest a slave or a servant is to his creator, to his Lord, is when he is making sujood, prostration. So the more you get your, you know, front head dirty on the, on the, on the ground there, the closest you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of people, you know, make their supplications when they are making sujood. Because that's kind of closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a lot of a hadith says that if you make your wudu and your uh, you know prayer regularly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clean you from you know your minor infarction there. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aqim is salata in salata tanha in il fahsha'i wal munkar. Establish the regular prayer because the regular prayer will restrain from Fahsha or Munkar, you know, from shameful act and unjust act. And, you know, a lot of people kind of think, how could that be, you know, if I'm going to cheat and do this and do that, you know, and I can still do prayer. But if you are a true Muslim, a true mu'min, you still have a little bit of, of, of uh, you know, iman, if haya, you know, no matter how bad a human being is, still when you do something bad, you feel it inside. You know, when you backbite somebody after you see them a few minutes ago, unless you're really, really evil, you feel a little bit bad about it. You know, I just talked with this guy, I hugged him and kissed him, you know, my brother, this, that, and so on, and then five minutes later, oh, he's bad, he did this, he did that. Still, you know, if, again, if you have a little bit of, of, of haya, of iman, you probably will feel bad about, you know, that action there. So, imagine when you're praying five times a day. You're praying five times a day. You just finished Zuhur and you're about to pray Asr. You just finished Maghrib and you're about to pray Isha. How could you do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you not to do it? How could you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they say with a straight face. You just badmouth somebody, you just cheated somebody, and now you come and you make khushu and you think that this prayer is good there. This is how, you know, the five times a day wisdom, Allahu Alam comes. Because as long as you're doing it, you're still in between prayers and that will prevent you from doing bad things, you know, fahsha and munkar there. There's an a, a beautiful hadith talks about Al Fatiha, okay? But in this hadith, Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Salah as Fatiha, and we all know that Salah is Fatiha, Fatiha al Kitab. Because there's a hadith, La Salata illa bi ummi al Kitab. There is no prayer acceptable or right or true without the Fatiha. If you do 10 rak'ah or 5 rak'ah, whatever it is, and there's no fatiha in there, then, then this is not a salah, this is not a true prayer. So there's no salah without fatiha. And the hadith Qudsi says, Qassamtu salata bayni wa bayni abdi nisfain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking in the first person. He says, I divided salah between myself and my slave, my, you know, servant. Two halves, Okay. And whatever my slave, my servant asked for, he was going to get it. He'll be granted it. So if he, the slave, says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, you know, we all know Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, my servant just praised me. My servant just praised me. You know, Alhamdu Aqsa Darjati Shukr. To praise somebody is to the best type of, you know, thanking. إِذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ إِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَثْنَ عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي When he says he is the owner, the master of the day of judgment, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say again, you know, he extolled me, my servant extolled me. 
Then he, if the servant says, Maliki Yawmiddin, you follow me, we all know the Fatiha. Yani. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, My servant, my slave glorified me. He said, This in between the part of me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the part of my slave. And my slave will get what he asked for. And then, if he says, "Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-ladin an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wa al-dalleen," guide us to the straight path, the path of those that you bestowed your uh, ni'am, you know, your bounties on, not the ones who got you wrath, not the one who went astray. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will say. Now this is the part that belongs to the slave and he's going to get it. You know, uh, the, the Fatiha, subhanAllah, there are volumes upon volumes upon volumes to, to talk, you know, to explain it. And every time, subhanAllah, you read, there's something new there. This is the Ummul Kitab. This is the mother of the book of the Holy Quran. And we, we say it how many times a day? You, you make the math there, okay? You should always think about it. You know, you go from glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala slowly to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help me. And this is, you know, human being there. You know, you want to go ask, uh, you know, you want to ask something from your wife there. Let's face it there. You go there and, oh, my beautiful wife, my love, this, that, and so on. And then you go and say, you know, can you cook this for me today? And this is, this is human nature there, okay? So imagine, you know, you're dealing this with the creator of, of this whole universe there. And this is uh, an advice for those of us who are married there. So don't try the same way with your, with your spouses there. So we do the Fatiha there, and we talked about it. We... We do the uh, tasbih, you know, in ruku' we say subhana uh, rabbi al-azim, in sujood we say subhana rabbi al-a'la, you know, three times, three times, you keep glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, you know, and praising him, okay? And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, I don't know, when you do the Dua at tashahud you know. This is, you are reenacting what happened between the Prophet ﷺ when he came so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And this was the conversation, you know, between the Prophet ﷺ and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say at tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu tayyibat, when we say at tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu tayyibat in the tashahud, we all do it in our prayer. This is what the Prophet sallallahu said when he came so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the Ma'raj. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers back. Tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu tayyibatu. Okay, this is the Prophet saying then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Assalamu alayka ayyuhu nabi Greetings to you, O Prophet. Assalamu alayna wa ibadillahi salihin. Greetings to all, to us and all those good slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So you, you're enacting this, what happened, what transpired between the Prophet Sallallahu and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Mi'raj, the seventh heaven. If you think about it, you know this is really, really profound, <coughs> and will just make you enjoy saying the Tashahud.
تحيات لله والصلوات الطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله Just keep thinking about it You're repeating the words of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the seventh heavens and then the words literal words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى That should give us solace there give us you know uh, a hugely emotional charge inshallah so think of all those issues with the prayer you know every time you do the prayer they try to concentrate try to think about you know what the shahad means what subhana rabbi alazim means what subhana rabbi alaa and inshallah you know this will help us charge the battery and you know be better muslim better human being inshallah aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alazim wa lakum wa likulli mu'min astaghfiru wa yaghfir lakum alhamdulillah rabbil alamin الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد كثيرا كما امر واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله so on a practical note there to finish there how can we maintain our you know five daily prayers how can we go the next step and try to make it in 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 jamaa in congregation as much as possible because a congregational prayer is 27 times you know worth in rewards than individual prayers first of all is the intention okay when you really really deep inside feel like i should do whatever i could do to make my you know daily prayers there now we all work okay we work sometimes in situation which will not allow us you know do this still deep inside have the intention of that i'm going to try my best to do my five daily prayers if i can you know find a, uh, a quiet corner there in my job to do it fine if i can ask my boss for permission to do it and believe me you know as much as you hear bad things about it there's probably as many you know good situation where your boss will be sympathetic to you will help you there again it all depends on the prayer i honestly believe that if your intention is pure and you mean it not going through the motion there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you you know if you are a student you taking you doing your classes there try to have classes where you can you know arrange for your prayer arrange for your juma just make sure that the intention is there and you know if you after all of that you cannot do it well try to make qada try to make it you know make up for what you lost there what you missed there you know uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a lot of facility there to help us do those uh, you know five uh, daily prayers you know if 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 uh, if you can not do it with the sujood and prostration and so on you physically you know incapable you can do it while you're sitting if you cannot do it while you're sitting you can do it while you're lying down if you are on an airplane you know you don't know where the qibla is you you do you know you ijtihad you try and then pray if you cannot make wudu you can make tayammum so all those things are you know you think about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to facilitate this because it's very important for us to keep you know the salah the namaz the prayer there so i mean please try and i'm i'm not again i i i myself wallahi i i miss prayers here and there and so on so it's not like i'm trying to you know uh, preach to you there we we are all under the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask for his help to help us do what he's asking us to do you know you cannot do anything without his help even what he's asking you to do you know la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al aliyyil azim that's what is the essence of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al aliyyil azim 
So, you know, please try your best. It's very important. Salah is extremely, extremely important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, amarana bi amrin azim, bada bi bi nafsi, wa thanna bi malaikati qudsi, is qala wa namiyadha al-qaila, inna Allah wa malaikata wa yusallun ala al-nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. The hadith says that dua umkh al ibada. You know, supplication is the essence of prayer. So say amen with me. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات. إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه. وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض. اللهم ارحمنا تحت الأرض اللهم ارحمنا يوم العرض عليك يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم اقسم عروش الظالمين اللهم اقسم عروش الظالمين اللهم اقسم عروش الظالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تدعي الفحشاء والمنكر وذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا آه إلا الله استووا اعتدلوا استووا اعتدلوا We talked about prayer when it comes to the congregational prayer the lines should be straight and there should be no space between you and your next brother or sister there so try to be a little bit snug there, you know, shoulder to shoulder and, you know, ankle to ankle there. It should be a bit snug. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد 
الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله العظيم يا نبينا إنا إنا علي القيوم وتوني استغفر الله العظيم يا نبينا وتوني استغفر الله We have a sister Samina Kubra who's in ICU now with long issues so may Allah سبحانه وتعالى give her shifa inshallah allahumma ishfi anta shafi shifa la yughadir saqama allahumma ishfi anta shafi shifa la yughadir saqama allahumma ishfi anta shafi shifa la yughadir saqama may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure her you know very soon inshallah and return her back to her family couple of announcement uh, tomorrow inshallah there will be community safety and tips between 1 and 3 o'clock here in the mosque. It's a good uh, learning experience for our community regarding safety, you know. There'll be uh, police, firefighter, and ambulance crews there, so try to come and learn something, bring your kids. And then the uh, registration for the Saturday school and the uh, noon Quran Academy is open online. So you can go online and register your children, inshallah. And again, don't forget this mosque from your generous donation. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we count on you to keep uh, our doors open. Jazakumullah khair. Wa iyaakum. <laughs>